Here's how to anger a set of fans with one move. It gets worse. Hold it! Let me explain myself. In what will be our final season with Espanol, Puche was starting to become the guy, and ever since we had Hlozek, his goal tally went down year by year, and he did not improve his attributes whatsoever. Plus, Labiet, Peters, and Gonzalez added with Puche made striker seem like a position we could offload. Yet fans were rightfully pissed that an icon of the club left. However, I demanded patience which led to more players leaving. Arnold Comas' release fee was activated by Valencia. He didn't want to renew and went to PSG. Nico Sanchez, who we brought years ago from Colombia, was sold for 26 million up front to Gladbach. Some other new gens left us, but then there was Rooney. Ashenet! Now hear me out. He got injured in preseason, knocking his stamina down to eight, so he could barely play an entire match of football. I don't get it. His contract was down to his final year, and he wanted to leave to one of many clubs and wouldn't renew. I also saw this guy as his replacement. Pace, dribbling, finishing, and he resigned for 120k a week with his club. Eder Militao for 80 million, anyone? What the? As we said goodbye to Rooney, we can hit it one more time. Roo, roo, roo. Ba, 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 ba. Now with Eder Militao in, there is nothing that can stop us. What the? What do you mean he's complicated? Unfortunately, the levers I had to activate to have our squad below the wage cap were selling two starters from last season. Caceres was sold as Arnold Martinez was good enough to start. The other player was originally Shutalo, but he wouldn't be enough. And since Francis wanted to leave due to interest in him, we accepted Real Madrid's 55 million offer, which he rejected. You what? Instead, he would join Rooney at Atletico Madrid. The other signing we made was a Wonder Kid center back from Bayern, who could play right back as well. Now the main goal of this last season was one, not to have everything implode. However, the other main goal was to advance to the Champions League knockouts for the very first time in this save. We failed in three attempts, and all have been painful. However, winning La Liga last season put us into pot one of the Champions League, placing us in a group with Olympiacos, Leipzig, and Monaco. Our reunion with Lozek had him not involved since he didn't play. Unlike the La Liga matches, we were playing well, but Damsgaard would open the scoring. Before the half, Puche would equalize. It seemed like a winner would be found, but that wasn't the case, as Monaco left with a draw. Leipzig away followed, and stats-wise, they were the better team. Chances came, including Asugo hitting the crossbar, but Leipzig would score. In their own net, after Labiad's shot got parried into Endica. How Leipzig didn't equalize is beyond me. Nevertheless, we left the Red Bull Arena with a 1-0 victory. Back-to-back -back wins versus Olympiacos followed, giving us an opportunity to clinch a Champions League knockout spot. Leipzig at home, and our Turkish man Hussein, who took over Rooney's role, found Alenia in behind, and he first time striked it into the net. A Wule penalty in the second half would seal the deal, and not just confirm us in the knockout stages, but as group winners. A loss to Monaco in the final group game thankfully didn't matter. With that result in December, it'd only be our second loss in all competitions. So what happened in La Liga from this Bilbao draw to the start of the new year? 11 wins and 1 draw. A lot of the mid to lower table teams were involved, but a 3-0 away win versus Villarreal was the key highlight. Speaking of them, they were our Spanish Super Cup semi-final opponents, and ever since we won this competition, we've lost to Real Madrid every single time. That would change today. Mostly because they're bad and not involved in the competition. But even with a rotated side, we defeated Villarreal despite missing a pen. Labiat scored and was leaving for AFCON soon, so we needed to use him to his max before he left. In the final, we'd face off with Atletico Madrid. I would try to build this up more, but they just gifted us a goal and we lifted the trophy. By Wu Lei, of course. Also, we played them again three days later, this time in the league, and the exact same scenario happened. Another mistake? Another victory for Espanol. Our undefeated run would continue making us look like the Sandman from Punch-Out. Unfortunately, Real Madrid has been a thorn in my side for far too long. They drew us earlier in the season with the dumbest decision of the save, which means we've not defeated them in 9 attempts. Although, things were going well for us. We were 2-0 up. But then, we lost a header from a goal kick and they ended up scoring. It happened again and we drew 2-2, which was the only fault in January. Nevertheless, in the Copa del Rey, our quarterfinal draw saw us face them again. 10 matches without a win versus them. The odds were against us. Who the hell is their keeper? Well. 
That was easy. In the semifinals, it'd be Barcelona over two legs. Although, a match versus third place Real Sociedad occurred prior. We had our side rotated due to modern day football having so many damn matches. I was expecting to have a hard time against the only side who has defeated us in La Liga thus far. I was wrong. Biggest La Liga win in the 21st century. What followed was a 2-0 victory versus Barcelona in the Copa del Rey first leg, where we saw Labiad and the Turkish wonder kid Hussein scoring. Hussein, what? Everyone was missing Rooney, but this guy was doing more, and we found a replacement song. Who? 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 Ba, 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 ba. Repeat fixtures were common as we played Barcelona again three days later in the league. Unlike the first match, we didn't step up, and despite them getting a red card before halftime, the first goal they scored couldn't be matched. The great news was that in the same exact fixture later on in the month, we confirmed our place in the Copa del Rey final with a 1-1 draw. Add that to a couple Wule goals in La Liga, and we could win every single trophy this season. Although, the Champions League was next. <laughs> The round of 16 draw gave us Inter, and the first leg was at the San Siro, which is where we witnessed two Champions League eliminations. This time, a goal came from us. With the people asking, Hussein what? Hussein responds with a cross to Puche to give us a 1-0 lead. We were edging them out, but after a Richard's mistake, Musa Diaby pulled off this incredible strike to equalize. As I was flabbergasted by that, Moise Kane. Oh my god, what are you doing, Victor G? Moise Kane stepping up and it scores. Not a great way to end the game, but in leg two at home, Lorenzo Luca was getting open. Finds Richards on the wing, Richards whips it in. Who, what you saying? Who's saying? Who's saying what? Who's saying this? Who? 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 Ba, 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 ba. 10 minutes later, Hussein then decided to make our lives a lot more difficult. Charon doors. Oh, don't. <laughs> more chances were coming for Inter. However, they weren't on their A game. Then suddenly, out of nothing, Shutalo going up the field, risky, but Brais Mendez is all alone. Brais Mendez, let's go! Brais, what a strike! Moise Kane, oh, sorry, Keane, would lose his head. We'd score another and advance to the quarterfinals. Our opponents were Arsenal, a consistent Champions League team managed by Pioli. They had a strong side, and what happened in the first leg versus Inter occurred here. We scored first, but conceded two second half goals for a 2-1 loss going into the home tie. A hint of deja vu was in the air, but could we overcome Arsenal? Uh... Oh, we win it though, Alenia, in behind to Peters, Peters from... Oh, wait, rebound. Let's go, Mathis Peters! Alenia on the tack, Richards, Alenia whips it in, let's go! 3-2 on aggregate. Still a lot of football to be played, Arsenal are going to be dangerous, Martinelli's going to cut back. What's with our wingers getting red cards in Champions League matches? Nevertheless, Arsenal were knocking, but our back line wasn't opening the door, as yes, we advanced to the Champions League semi-final versus Chelsea. But before that, with the amount of matches going on, the side were beginning to drop points. With the rotated side, we drew Sporting Gijon and Vallecano, while getting a win versus Sevilla. After the Arsenal tie, the genius schedule makers decide to have our cup final three days post-Arsenal versus Arrested at Falco Madrid. For once, we were the ones with the fittest problems. Puche and Hussein were injured, Arnold Martinez wasn't fit, and Bryce Mendes, who had been key, was out for the rest of the campaign. But after no goals in the first half against two of our former players, Labiad, Patience, Gonzalez to Peters, finish it. Let's go! The Cypriot, Mathis, Peters makes a 1 0. Oh no, corner kick. Timber on the ball now. Oh gosh, Yovane finds it. Push everyone up. Corner kick. Oh no, it's for them. We still had two trophies on the table, so let's check on the Chelsea tie. It was probably the best team I've seen them have in Football Manager, speared ahead by their Ivorian new gen. We were easily the underdogs, but there was nothing to note in the first half. Camavinga would get that first big chance of the half, and the second. I made a tactical change prior that didn't go through with the next highlight. We'll see though, maybe I won't complain. Malero. Let's go! Late in the match, I tried to make some changes. But once again, they don't go through with an upcoming highlight. Labiad takes outstrengths Nianzu, Molero, 
Finds Puche. Holy, did not expect Puche to come up and smack that into the back of the net. Truben unable to match it. 2-0 Espanyol going into the second leg. Could the first European final we play in be the most prestigious of all? Oh no, Militao takes out Camavinga. Oh no. Puche, Labiad. He finds Puche. Too bad with the kick save. Let's encourage the team for that. Oh, why did they encourage... Oh, because we're technically winning. <laughs> Bro, Militao and Ahmed Hojas having the worst matches of their careers. Gosh, 95th minute highlight. Finds Alain... Or no, actually. Ahmed Hojas in behind the Puche. No way! Yes! Let's go! Oh my gosh! Oh no! Last second from Chelsea! After a crazy match and nothing happening in extra time, it was time for penalties. Mason Mount is stepping up. Top right corner, top bins from Frank Sun Mia. Oh my gosh, True Ben guessed early, but he doesn't get it. Kuasi, the man from Ivory Coast, will he finish this? Let's go! Stopped by Van Handenhoven! Militao now, made a mistake earlier in the game. Just tucks it home in the middle. Ansu Fati, the former Barca man, one of many stars on this Chelsea team. He hits the bar! Puche, to give us a two lead. Oh my gosh, top bins. Camavinga. Tucks it home, calmly. We need a goal here, and we go through to the final of the Champions League. Julio Gonzalez got a red card earlier in the Champions League. Can he get us to the final? Let's go! We're off to the final of the Champions League. Our final game with Espanyol will be against Manchester City in the final. But we had a La Liga title to defend. After the Copa del Rey pain, we defeated Abar, lost to Villarreal, then got three victories versus Levante, Alaves, and Salta de Vigo. A win would clinch the La Liga title on match day 37, but a bad few minutes against Atletico Madrid would give us an L and a one point lead over them on the final day. Thankfully, we squeaked through with a 2-1 win at Almeria, despite them nearly equalizing on several occasions. Wule got to lift another title and even got into the team this season in La Liga. I thought it'd be perfect to start him in the final versus Manchester City, but he got injured in the lead up. Instead, it would be Mia taking his place for his final match with Espanyol. The starting 11 was looking like this, controversially starting Victor G due to his love for big games and dropping Elena as he decided to complain before the final. City's lineup made this match the typical David vs Goliath, and their only European trophy was last season's Europa League. So what happened? At the Santiago Bernabeu, good ball, Molero, poor shot, Mbappe on the ball, Foden, Bernardo, off the post. Foden, causing some dangers. Rosas, it's gonna cross it in to Lotaro. Militao, oh my gosh, 80 million for you to miss a header in the Champions League final. Like, how did you miss that? All right, wow, Victor G, relishes big games, huh, FM? Huh, I would've been sad if that happened, but Labiad, Puche, in come on, Puche. Oh, come on. Nothing was happening in the second half, so we had to go with the four triple two. And later in the match, De Jong, uh, Bernardo, oh, blocked. Win that, win that, oh, no. No, not like this. Uh, and they make it three because Richards can't jump. We did our best. It wasn't meant to be. We tried to go for it, City. I don't think they were the better team. They did it out of XGS because we went for it late, but I don't think they were the better team. And unfortunately, a massive error by Militao screwed us over. Really, Militao, incredible. Miss a header in the Champions League final. 80 million, 80 million, 80 million for that guy. I want to throw up. One thing to do though, 